We are continuing through our Rooted series. We've been working through our values. We kicked it off with a vision series, talked about a mission statement, and now we're working through our values. We have seven values as a church. We've already talked about the number one value, Jesus is our message. Number two value, connection is our culture. Connection is not what we do, it's who we are. And then you came, if you're a guest, I just want to say welcome. You came on the giving sermon. Today is generosity is our privilege. It's just like, why every time do I show up at church, are they always talking about giving? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, we haven't, I can't answer that for you, but it is today we're talking about how generosity is our privilege. This is our third value. But you might be relieved to know that I'm actually going to take a little bit of a different spin on this value for us. I've preached this value before. Uh, three different times, we even did a series last year on generosity. And as I was praying through, God, what do you what what do you want to share? You know, I think as a preacher, that's always a good thing to pray. God, what do you you know? What do you have? And I, and I just I pray. I felt like God was telling me that people need to connect with this thought: the generosity of God. So that's what we're going to talk about for the next few minutes together. Is the generosity of God. That as followers of Jesus, we know and understand and can even comprehend and potentially live out generosity only because we serve the most generous God that has lavished his love on us beyond anything that we could possibly comprehend. So at Pinewood, we say, We don't give uh, for a blessing, but from a blessing. But I think oftentimes whenever we say it, it's almost like, you know how some statements you can almost just say without fully fully feeling the weight of it? And I think that's one of those statements. What do we actually mean when we say we give from a blessing? Are we actually saying we're giving because we just have so much money in the bank that we just don't know what to do with? So we're so blessed, you know, that we just, no, that's not what we're saying. We're, what we're saying is, is that we are blessed by God with something greater than money so that as we give from that blessing of something greater than temporary and tangible resources on this planet, that it's a privilege to give. And, and people are like, oh, man, thank you. Why would you? Oh, this is, this is nothing. This is, just, this is just me being obedient to what God has called me to do, to live with open hands and to give back and to love and serve the people around me. And so we're going to talk about how generosity is a privilege. We know that all good gifts come from God. Let's look at James chapter 1 verse 17. We're actually going to be looking at a lot of verses today, but let's first look at James chapter 1 verse 17. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. Every good and perfect gift. God, a generous God, gives good gifts to his children. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for everybody that's here today. God, I don't believe there's anybody here by accident. I believe that there's a message, a clear message of the gospel that you want to penetrate into their life today, to transform their life. So Holy Spirit, please move. Please speak through me. Father, I I need you today to do what I cannot And that's to meet everybody where they are, in the hidden, in the doubt, in the fear, in the uncertainty. Meet them them where they are, Holy Spirit, and give them hope, give them comfort, and transform their life. Jesus, you do this. When you show up, it's impossible to leave the same. So we thank you for your presence. Thank you that you're active. Thank you that you're moving. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, first, we're going to be looking at a very familiar passage, and it is John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son so that whoever believes in him would not perish but have everlasting life. The first act of generosity from God that I want us to see is that God loves you so much that he gave. God loved you so much that he gave. He didn't just give anything. He gave his one and his only son. He gave his most prized possession. I have five children. And I can 
promise you right now, I, like in a moment with any one of my children, if they were ever in danger of any kind, without hesitation, I would give my life for any one of my kids. I remember even one moment, my daughter, one of my daughters, was running out into the streets because our kids love playing in the middle of streets here in downtown Boulder. And they, she was in the middle of the street. And I remember looking out, seeing her in the street, just kind of playing around. And I ran out of the door and ran into the street and grabbed her and ran to the other side. I didn't run to the street, look both ways to make sure a car wasn't coming, and then jump in to save my daughter. No, because there's, there's something in the heart of a father that just says, I would rather jump in front of a car if it meant that she got hurt less. I would rather take my own life if it meant saving her life. Even, even to the extent that when my kids are sick and they're throwing up all night and they're, they feel terrible, everything in me as a heart of a father says, I, God, like, like, put that virus in me. Like, I, I don't want to see my kids sick. Like, put, make me sick. And I believe that is the heart of the father to want to protect and, and love that which is their most prized possession. I can't think of, I, I can tell you right now, if you were in the middle of a street, I'd be like, hey, Tom, it's a car coming. I wouldn't jump in front of a car for you. I love you. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, there's, there's something different to the heart of a father. When you get sick, I'm like, man, I'm praying for you, bro. You know, <laughs> I'm praying for you. <laughs> Hope you get sick pay. But I, I mean, I'm not, I, I, I'm not the extent of my love towards that, which is my most prized possession is so much more significant. You feel, are you feeling the weight of where we're going here with God so loved he loved the world that he gave. What does it mean that he gave? There's a passage uh, that says in Romans chapter 8, 32, he did not even spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. He did not spare his own son, but he gave him up for us all. God loved you so much that he gave his one and only son. He did not spare even his most prized possession because that's how much he loves you. This, and if you're here, I, I just want you to open up your mind, open up your soul, your heart, and just say, feel the weight of this level of unconditional love for you. No, 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 I know God loves me. You feel the weight of his generous love towards you? of what he gave, would you give that for somebody? How do we know love? How do we know what generosity is? Well, because we serve a generous God that did not even spare his own son. If God did not spare his own son, why are we so hesitant so often to spare a portion of our time, to spare a portion of our resources, a portion of our energy, a portion of our income? We're so hesitant to spare even just a little for the kingdom of God. But God says, I gave all for you. Wow. That's why I think there's a disconnect between what we actually understand of the generous love of a God and how we actually live out our life. Who can separate us from this love of God? We also see in 1 John 4, 9 through 11, God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his one and only son into the world so that we might live through him. Love consists in this, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Let's make it clear. We, un we can live love because we've been given love. We love not because we love him, because he first loved us. We, we understand generosity, not because we're just generous people, but because we understand our generous God. You can give without loving. Isn't that true? Yeah. But you can't love without giving. This is the generous heart of our God. This is a true understanding of what love actually is. That's why we like to say it's a privilege. I'm, I'm, it's, it's, an act, it's an act of love because of the love that I've been shown to me. 
it was revealed among us in this way that he sent his one, one and only son into the world. This is an important thing to note. When God looked at earth with his purpose and his plan of redemption for all of humanity, he knew that he was sending his son to die. He, he sent him to go through an excruciating, brutal death to be the atoning sacrifice for our sin. Talk about a generous God. His love is generous. Number two, Jesus loves us so much that he died. God loves us so, so much that he gave. Jesus loved us so much that he died. This is one of my favorite passages in all of the Bible because I think this is one of the most Dem the best demonstrations that I can find of God meeting me where I am. And it says in Romans 5, 8, but God demonstrates his own love towards us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So there was a recognition. Jesus loved us so much that he died. There was a recognition when Jesus was on the cross that he, he looked out over the span of all humanity, past, present, and future, and he looked at your soul, your life, every moment of your life, and he says, I know you're going to sin. I know that you're imperfect. I know you're going to disobey, disrespect, and dishonor me a lot. But I love you so much that I want to demonstrate my love towards you, even that while you were still sinners. Because how many of you know we never enter a state of perfection? Yeah. <laughs> like right now, while we're still sinners, Christ looked into this moment and he said, I love you by dying on a cross for our sins. This is how we understand the love of a generous God. Jesus gave his life for you and for me. John 15, 12 through 13. No, no one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for a friend. If you're taking notes, I highly encourage you to write this down. The generosity of Jesus was not a portion of his goods, but the sacrifice of his life. The generosity of Jesus was not a portion of his goods, but the sacrifice of his life. So when we speak of this value of generosity as our privilege, oftentimes, and we've even talked about this a lot in the past, we go straight to, they're trying to take my money. Why do we go straight there? Well, maybe it's because of a past experience or maybe it's because it's the thing that you value most. I'm not really quite sure. But this is not how Scripture views a heart of generosity. It's not just a portion. It's the whole. So you, so you may be thinking, okay, I've, I, hey, I'm good. I've, I, I've given God an hour this week. Like I showed up to Love Boulder like, God, you can have it all. It's like, wait, hold on. I think, I, I think we're missing the idea here. It's, it's like, no, like I put a 10 in a plate, baby. I'm good. Like, like I, I'm, I'm, I'm living a generous life. I'm taking steps towards generosity. But Galatians 2.20 says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of Man who loved me and who gave himself for me. So I, I have been, but God demonstrates his love toward me and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for me. Yet I, I have been crucified with Christ and it is no longer I who live. Romans 1 and 2, I beseech thee, brethren, by the mercies of God to present your bodies as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable to God. This is your reasonable act of worship. Is, is not, I present my money to God as a reasonable, I present my time to, no, 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 no. Let's get a picture of what generosity looks like. Generosity looks like, God, you have everything. How do you want me to steward that? I'm not, I'm not an owner, I'm a steward. God, I lay down my life as an altar of sacrifice before you living stones, a living sacrifice. You have everything. My time, treasure, talents, friends, relationships, marriage, God, and especially take my kids. Like, you have everything, God. What I'm a steward of these resources and this time and this energy that you've given me. That is the heart 
of generosity. And that is the response that we have because God demonstrates his love towards us and that we were yet still sinners. Jesus doesn't just get a portion. He is our portion. The generous gift of grace. Notice how in every text, and this is so interesting, as, as I, as I co- comb through all of scriptures looking for key words like generosity, generous. I, I comb the scriptures looking for words like gift, gifts. And it's so incredible when you, when you find these passages specific to the gospel, there's all of these words of gift, gift, gift. Romans 6, 23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans 10, 8 through 13. Let's look at this text together. It's a little bit bigger text, but stay with me. Romans 10, 8 through 13. This message is near you in your mouth and in your heart. This is the message of faith we proclaim. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. One believes with the heart, resulting in righteousness. One confesses with the mouth, resulting in salvation. For the scriptures say, everyone who believes on him will not be put to shame, since there is no distinction between Jew and Greek, because the same Lord of all richly blesses all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Ephesians 2, 8, 9, for you are saved by grace through faith, and this is not Of yourself, it is a gift of God, not a result of work so that nobody can boast. Are you seeing a trend in Scripture that this generous God is wanting to give you gifts? Not just financial provision, because whenever I actually look through Scripture, originally I was thinking, I want to find all the fun little unique ways. I like, and so I found all these Scriptures with like, God gives us wisdom and, and provision. He gives us work. He gives us Sabbath. He gives us nature. He gives us, I was thinking of all of these specific things, which is all true. Like all, James 1, 17, all good and perfect gifts come from the Father. We, we acknowledge that. We recognize that. But as I began to prepare that sermon with all these gifts, I began to think, The fact that God gives me wisdom doesn't make me want to go out and give somebody a check for $1,000. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) Like, this this is true, and this is good, and I'm grateful. But I was just thinking, what, what, what gift is it that God gives us that transforms every area of our life? You ready for this? His love. It changes everything. God, I just, I, I, you, you have it all. I just want a second in your presence. Have, have my life. So put me wherever you want. I just want to, I just want to see your glory. I just, I just want a second with you, Jesus. That's why we keep coming back to the Father loved us so much that he gave. He gave that which was his most prized possession. That's why we keep coming back to Jesus loved us so much that he died on a cross for our sins. He died and was buried and he was risen again so that we can have life through him and through him alone. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me, through him. We can have salvation. Talk about a good gift. Salvation. Come on. And then finally, the last thing is the Holy Spirit gives you the Father's love in Christ. So here we have the, we're being touched by the gospel through the Trinity. The Father gives his Son Jesus lays down his life, and then, the, and then the Holy Spirit is sent by God. John 14, 15 through 17. If you love me and you keep my commands, and I will ask the Father, and he will give, you ready to say that word again? He will give you another counselor to be with you forever. He is the Spirit of truth. The world is unable to receive him because it doesn't see or know him. But you do know him because he remains with you and will be in you. I believe that. As far as generosity goes, I love seeing generosity through the lens of the Trinity. You see every aspect of the Trinity at work through the generosity and through love. God the Father giving, but then you see Jesus giving his life, laying down his life for you and for me. But then you see the Holy Spirit being sent by God to point you to Jesus. You see the Holy Spirit is like, hey, this isn't about me. Okay, this is, let's, let's look to Jesus. The Holy Spirit gives generously in every area of your existence. 
We lack nothing through the power and the gifting of the Holy Spirit. He empowers us and equips us for every good work. He creates and he makes creative. The Holy Spirit comforts and he carries us in our weakness. The Holy Spirit guides and the Holy Spirit leads. He regenerates and he brings about rebirth. He sanctifies through conviction of our sins. He's in tune in every detail of our life. He seals us for salvation. He fills us to serve and to carry out the mission of God. And he empowers us to live a supernatural life. Did I miss anything? (laughs) The Holy Spirit loves you. God loves you. And he generously gives you the Holy Spirit, salvation through Jesus, and the love of a father so that you lack nothing. I, I, I need nothing. Jesus gave me everything. We see God... As the provider, John 3, 16. We see God the Son as the Savior, Romans 5, 8. And we see God the Holy Spirit as the helper. How do we understand generosity? How do we know generosity? Because we serve a generous God. I love that song, I thought I knew what love was. I thought I knew what love was. But it's better. It's so much better. If you're finding yourself ever wanting to hold on, I believe that a generous life looks like this. I believe that that whenever you start to find yourself hold on, slowly you start to close your fists and you start to claim things that belong to you. No, this is mine. And you you become almost delusion, I guess, uh, delusion by the illusion of control. Like, no, no, this thing is mine. No, I worked hard for this. I'm going to use it how I want to. No, I only have a limited amount of time, and that time is mine. It's a delusion of illusion of control that, and honestly, I think it's a a forgetfulness of, of the generosity of God in our life. But a heart of generosity, whenever you start to find yourself starting to close your fist, a heart of generosity says, Jesus, bring me back to the cross where your love was poured out. Break me free from a heart of control. Break me free from a heart of selfishness and, and stinginess. God, I, wanna, I don't want to look at generosity as an obligation. Was God obligated to come down from the throne? Was God obligated to give us in? Was God obligated? No, God served him because he loved you. Scripture teaches in Corinthians, God loves a cheerful giver, not out of obligation or compulsion, but when we come and with a privilege and a humble heart to say, God, everything that... I have is yours. Andrew Murray is this, uh, he's a pastor, theologian, all this, but really he, his like niche is in prayer. And he has this quote that I thought was really profound to wrap it up. It says, the world asks, what does man own? Christ asks, how does he use it? And I think this is an interesting statement because it shifts our perspective from kingdom to cult- from culture to kingdom. What, what, yeah, but what do you own? No, wrong question. Well, well, where are you headed? Wrong question. What's your status? Wrong question. It's, 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 how, it's how am I stewarding what God has given me? In the kingdom of God, we are not owners, but stewards. That's why we say we don't give to God, we give back to God. Talk about a shift in perspective. In the kingdom of God, we are not proud in our possessions, but we are humbled by his provision. So whenever we like to say that we give from a blessing, we believe it's actually true. When we say we actually give back to God, we believe it's actually true. When somebody, even as small as somebody wanting to borrow a tool, I don't go into, well, that's mine. I worked really hard for that tool. (laughs) And I know for a fact, I'm never going to see that tool again. (laughs) I've lost power drills, hammer drills, saws. I did get a table saw, though, back. Thank you. Yes, I, I, I want to acknowledge I did get that back. Thank you. And, and, and hallelujah. In good condition. It was a blessing. But it shifts. Where was I going here? <coughs> but it shifts, your, it shifts your perspective. When somebody asks me even to borrow a tool, my mindset isn't, well, I own it. My mindset is that of a steward. Is can okay, God, you, you call me to steward this thing. It's like, it's not mine, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to share it. But how can I steward as I give it? How can I steward what you have as I'm generous? 
God, okay, this money is not mine, but how can I budget well? This money isn't mine, but how can I invest well? This money isn't mine, but how can I take that which you've blessed me with and you've given in every area of my life? God, this body isn't mine, but I know that you've called me to steward it well. Like this body is a living sacrifice to you, so maybe I shouldn't do things that harm my body and, and, and put me at risk. And do you see what I'm saying? There's a stewardship mindset. God loves you. He's a generous giver. Matthew 7, 9 through 11, it says this. Who among you, if your son asks him for a bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? If you then, who are evil, God's really coming at us, right? Jesus is like, I already know, okay? I know your thoughts. I know your intentions. You're evil. So if you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to, those, uh, to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good things to those that ask him? The Bible over and over and over again depicts the Father as a good and generous God that lavishes all good and perfect things on our life. We know generosity. We have been empowered by the Holy Spirit to live a generous life because we serve a generous God. I'm going to pray a prayer. And this is a heart of releasing control and wanting to come back to generosity. So I'm going to ask you to do something. Would you just close your eyes and just listen to this prayer as I pray it? And if, and if there's anything that resonates with you in this prayer, you can just kind of say like, yes, God, I agree with that. Or, or you could repeat it in your own mind, in your own head. You could pre- repeat it out loud, however you choose. But I'm going to just pray this prayer of generosity kind of coming back to the heart of our generous God. It says, God, thank you so much for loving me by sending me your son to die for me. What great love I cannot comprehend. I give you my life. All that I have is yours. Fill me with your spirit that I might live a supernatural life. Help me steward your resources well and for your glory. I'm going to read that again. God, thank you for loving me by sending your son to die for me. What great love I cannot comprehend. I give you my life. All that I have is yours. Fill me with your spirit that I might live a supernatural life. Help me steward your resources well and for your glory. God, that is our prayer today, is that we would see all good things as from you, that we would see our time, that we would see our bodies, that we would see our resources, the gifts that you've given us, the spiritual gifts that you've given us, our relationships, our kids, our marriage, that we would see all of these things of gifts towards you that we get to steward. Father, may we never live with closed hands. Father, we know that there is no abundant life in control of our own. There is no abundant life in selfish ambition. Jesus, we know that the abundant life is found in you. So, Father, today, we we want to become rooted in the right things. We want to come back to the core truths that you love us. Core truths of the gospel that you sent your son down from heaven, eternal God, to live a perfect and sinless life, to die on a cross, and to be raised from the dead, defeating sin, hell, death in the grave so that we might have eternal life. Father, we come back to the core truths and the core principles of who you are and what you've done for us. God, thank you for demonstrating your love towards us. Thank you for giving us an example, not just an example, but Father, a a path to follow of what it looks like to love and to live generous lives. Father, we do not want to give without loving. We want our motivation to be pure. We want our motivation to be rooted in you. Father, may we, may we love by giving. God, I pray for somebody that's here today that's, that has had a difficult time being generous. Father, bring them back to the cross. May they fall at the foot of the cross and realize, maybe for the first time, or maybe for as a reminder, Jesus, of just how much you love them. And Father, right now, may their hands begin to open up, their lives begin to open up, and may they give you their life today. Father, thank you for this time. Thank you for your word, for your truth, and for your spirit guiding us in all knowledge and wisdom and insight. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.